Columns are structural elements that transfer the loads from the upper floors to the foundation. Since they are supporting elements, a failure of a column located in a critical location can cause a collapse of the structure. So they are very important elements. But how do you design a concrete column? How do you size the member and how do you design the reinforcement of the column? This is Javier Encinas and today we're going to discuss an overview of the structural design of concrete columns. Let's get started. Concrete columns are usually subject to axial loads and bending moments. The capacity of a column can be expressed in terms of an interaction diagram, which is a graph that shows the maximum combination of axial load and bending moment for the column. This is a typical interaction diagram for a concrete column. Each point of the interaction diagram is calculated by assuming a different position of the neutral axis. You set up the maximum concrete uh, compressive strain, 0.003 per ACI, and on the other side we calculate the, uh, the steel strain for that position of the neutral axis. For example, when the steel strain is less than the yield strain, the concrete fail first. So all this area in the diagram is is in com compression controls because the concrete fails first. This point is called the balanced uh, condition. It's exactly when the compression fails at the same time as the, as the tension. At this point the steel has reached the yield stress. So the steel and the concrete fail at the same time in a balanced uh, condition. And the lower portion of the diagram is said to be a tension controlling because the steel has already yielded. So in this case, the steel will fail first. Once the strain diagram has been defined, it's easy to calculate the compression block and it's easy to find the stresses at the reverse. Then the capacity PN is the sum of the forces, uh, tension and compression. Um, MN, the nominal moment capacity, is equal to these forces times the distance to the centroid of the section. This procedure is repeated multiple times with different location of the neutral axis until the interaction diagram is constructed as shown. So the interaction diagram shows the maximum combination of axial load and bending moment that a column can resist. So this line represents the capacity, is called the nominal capacity, for design purposes, this nominal capacity needs to be affected by phi, the understrength factor. When the column is short, the interaction diagram is defined completely by the material, so the properties of the material section. The column slenderness is defined in terms of the slenderness ratio, which is KL over R. K is the effective length factor. L is the actual length of the column, and R is the radius of the aeration of the section. When a slender column is actually loaded, it tends to buckle, so this deflection occurs at the mid-height. This deflection times the actual load creates an additional moment. It's called a secondary moment. This additional moment, in turn, creates an additional deflection this additional deflection in turn creates an additional moment and so on until the system converges. This is called the P-delta analysis because it involves the actual load P and the deflection delta. P-delta analysis is very important in the design of concrete columns. In this interaction diagram we can see this straight line representing a short column as explained before and the dashed line represents the slender column failure. If we increase the moment P delta, as explained here, then it crosses the interaction diagram at a lower point, which means that the column has a reduction in uh, actual capacity. So we added this moment, P delta, but we lost this additional actual load capacity in the column. In general terms, slender columns have smaller actual capacity than uh, short columns. When you open as deep concrete and create a calculation for a column design, this is the template that you see. Here I have prepared an example to illustrate the design of a column according to the theory that I just explained. It's a square column, 18 by 18. 
but it's 20 feet long, so it's a slender column. It belongs to a frame that is uh, laterally restrained by a sheer wall or other means. So this is a non-sway column. It's also reinforced with a reverse number eight, three at the top and at the bottom, and one rebar at the sides. If we go to the load stab, this is a biaxial column, and uh, we are specifying uh, the load cases, dead life, wind, etc. I have applied some loads here for dead, life, and also for wind, for wind including some moments. To check the slenderness in this column, there are two methods explicitly recognized in the ACI. One is the elastic second order analysis. This is performed by a general purpose analysis software with this capability and is the most rational method and recommended by ACI. It considers the correct regions in the section and the resulting moments don't need to be magnified, so they can use directly for design purposes. The other method recognized by the ACI is the moment magnification procedure, and it's just an amplification of the uh, first order analysis. This is done not during the analysis of the structure, but during the design of the member. So in this method, you get the first order analysis moments, and then you magnify them. In this case, we're gonna use this method for uh, illustration purposes. As the concrete uh, applies the method for every load combination, and uh, the method includes uh, uh, the calculation of the moments at the ends of the column. And this is the magnification factor that will uh, amplify the moments in the column. So the resulting magnified moment will be used for design purposes. In this case, this is a biaxial column. This table shows some of the most important points in the interaction diagrams for a PNMN. This table here shows the factor loads and amplify according to the method just described. And in this table, this is a comparison between the amplified moments and the calculated design uh, capacity moments. In the contents tab, you can see the same calculations in more detail. These are the tables. Just, uh, this is in, uh, for, one, for the moments around the X, and these are the moments around Y. These are the important points in the interaction diagram in more detail, and this is the column strength uh, calculations. In the detail tab, you can see the step-by-step uh, -step calculations. This is the amplified factor loads with all the exposed formulas and references to the ACI code. The column strength. And graphically, this is a 2D interaction diagram showing the PN, MN diagram here. And inside is a design interaction diagram affected by the phi factor. Since this is a biaxial column, we need a 3D interaction diagram. The program shows the 2D interaction diagram for any uh, angle of rotation uh, of the section. For example, if we put here 30 degrees, we obtain a different uh, interaction diagram at, uh, at that angle. If we say 45 degrees, it's a different interaction diagram as well. If the points representing the loads are inside the usable area in the design interaction diagram, the design is uh, acceptable. As you can see, it's very simple to design a concrete column using as deep concrete. Uh, you can complete the design and optimize the design in a matter of minutes, which otherwise, if you try to do the design by hand, could take you several hours. With this, we complete the presentation of this overview of the structural design of concrete columns. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you very much for your attention.